Hey guys, Chip here. So today I want to show you some really kind of cool effects that you can do in Blender. And you got to start off in Inkscape first. And I got to say, I'm in love with Inkscape. The more I play around with it, the more I really like it. And I really don't like paying Adobe for Illustrator. And uh, Affinity Designer is nice, but it just doesn't have the power that Inkscape does or Illustrator in, in a lot of things. And for instance, this thing I'm going to show you right now, you can't be done in Affinity Designer. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm using Inkscape 1.2. Right now, I think 1.2.1 is, is available, actually. And of course, as you know, Inkscape, like Blender, is uh, open source, so you can download it for free. So let's get start, started. What I want to talk about is creating kind of a hex. Uh, pattern and you know how difficult those can be I guess maybe you do maybe you don't I don't know but they're very hard to do in, in blender or even in, in any kind of drawing package Inkscape makes this super easy so let's talk about it. you click on this little thing right here and you go to this you have star and you have this polygon shape and you want to make sure you set the corners to six and and then you you click and you'll drag out and as you do you know you want to make sure that that you're going to get this thing to be flat. Uh, and if you hold the control key down, that will actually snap to a place, you know, so let's just start, let's just start something like right there. So that there's our, there's our hex pattern right now. You know, I can, I can click on, you know, this would it give it whatever color I want, but if I click on this, it's, it's, uh, it makes it so that it's uh, transparent. If you hold a shift key down and click on any color here, now you're setting the actual stroke, the stroke. So you can see down here as, as we scroll down, you know, you'll see there's the hairline. We're changing, you're just changing the color right here. That's, you can come in here and change the actual stroke and the size of the stroke and all that stuff. That's actually also over in here, stroke style, hairline. We can make it whatever. I, I, I use hairline. So, okay, let's go ahead and continue. So what we want to do is we basically want to add a modifier. Think of it like in Blender. It's a modifier. So we're going to go in under path. I think it's called path effects, right? So I've got it stored over here in my little side panel. And you'll have to figure that out on your own. It's not that hard to do, but once you have this here, you'll basically click add a path effect. And again, think of these as modifiers. I'll hit this tiling button and you can see that we've tiled these already. So let's go ahead and make, I don't know, columns nine and or, or, or rows nine, columns nine. We'll just make it kind of square for now. And with this set up, what we want to do is say offset 50. So we're going to 50% offset. Okay, that means, and then we want to offset in the vertical direction. So you can start to see we, we're starting to get there already. And then we just need to adjust the gap. So right now we have an X gap. So let's add, adjust the Y gap. So I'm going to go ahead and, and crank out the Y gap a little bit. Maybe adjust the X gap down a little bit. You know, maybe adjust the Y gap up a little more. So something like that. So now you look, notice we don't have a square anymore. So we need to add more columns. So I'm going to look up here and here's my width and height. So that's 100, that's about 200 by 230. So I'm going to just keep adding columns and until I get those to be close. That's about close enough right there. That's going to be what we're going to get. Now I can use this as an SVG to, to import into Blender, and of course you could do this in Blender, but check this out. And, and 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 I know in geometry nodes you can do it also, but man, this is just so darn so much faster. I can go into scale here, and I'm gonna just hit the minus button, and notice that they're getting smaller as they go down. And I can basically say minimize the gaps if I want to, if I want to do that, but I don't want to do that. But but I can do that too. And so there's all kinds of different ways. I can go this direction, I can go that direction. You know, I'll, I'll just leave it in this direction. Now I'll just go ahead and say save as. And it just saves it as a default SVG. I'll use this drawing, uh, replace that. Okay, and we'll go now into Blender. And here we are in a blank scene in Blender. And I just go import, and we want a scalable vector graphics. And let's go to downloads where I put this. Scroll all the way down. Here it is, import the SVG. So let's go and I'm gonna hit the five key and then the which is takes me out of perspective and then, the, and then the one key and then the period key, I'm sorry, seven key and the period key. And now we have this. And so what we'll do first is I'm going to say object set origin, uh, to geometry, puts the origin there and then, uh, object snap selection to cursor. So that puts it all right there. And then I'm going to convert this object cause it's a curve right now. So I'm going to convert it to a mesh and I'll tab into it and I'll hit a for all and F for fill. And now we have them filled. And then uh, while I'm here, I'm going to move them down about this and say E and move it up about like so. 
and then tab out of it. And so now we have the origin is set at the middle here. Let's go ahead and just uh, shade these flat. Yeah, that'll be fine. And let's give this a uh, SY cutter. So yeah, so that's good. So we don't have any smoothness going on. It's all going to be flat. Notice that our polygon faces are facing the right direction, right? That's important. Now that we're done with this, all we need to do is save it as a, a kid ops insert. So let's uh, first convert it to uh, uh, this wireframe. So that means that we're looking over here in the object uh, viewport display and it's set to wire right here. And you can shortcut to that is just using the kid ops uh, toggle VP display, which basically with the control shift and alt key and you hit Z, it just toggles them between all these things. So we want it set to here so that so that kid ops will understand this is actually a cutter. So I'm going to go into my kid ops. I'm going to find a, a folder like this test folder. I want to put it in and I'm going to right click on it and I'll say kid ops, create insert, use object origin. And there it is. And you see it kind of rendered right, but it didn't. And I'll explain that here in a second. But if I want to adjust that, well, actually, I'll do it right now. But I'll just hit edit insert and we'll go into that. And you can see that. Uh, if I go into my kit ops, I'm going to say load render scene and camera to insert. And you see, yeah, it didn't quite get it right. And the reason for that is because this is a pretty complex Boolean. So what we need to do is select this floor, go up under here and under here, instead of using fast, we're going to use exact and then we're going to get it correct. Right. And if I, you know, turn off face orientation, you see, we've got it correct. And so we say, uh, let's go back into the camera view and let's just say render thumbnail and let's say new general don't save. Here's a cube. I'm going to start here and we'll just go into that same K pack that we were in right here and add the insert to this scale it up and turn off face orientation. So, so we're going to look at this and see that it actually works fine here. So sometimes you, if it doesn't work, you're going to have to go in and select the object and go into your modifiers and make it exact. But other times it'll work fine. That seems to work pretty good. Anyway, just thought I'd share this with you. It's kind of a cool tool. And you can, like I say, you can store these things in KitOps. And and, uh, and this actually works with the new version of KitOps Pro. Check it out. Talk to you later. Bye.